Okay, yeah, I'll talk to I, you for a second, Connor. Give me a second. Wait, were you sure. leaving? No, oh. no, no. I can I can talk for a second. I I, uh, I did want to leave in the next like five to ten minutes though, because I need to work on a three D print and go hang out with the family. Oh, that's fine. I just need to workshop you. Um, I need to know what uh, important things about the UK riots you think an American uh, centrist or like right leaning person would want to know. Sure. Um, are they race, race related? Are they religion related? Uh, who are the tribal factions that are involved? What motivates them? Has anybody died? Uh, and also what was like the, so if I, if I had to guess, it was like soccer hooligans against Muslims, right? Mm -hmm. Um, so did the Muslims do anything crazy? Because there was obviously like a, a few videos of like Muslim dudes, a few white people and also walking around with machines. Um, did anybody actually die or were those just like shows of force that didn't result in anything? Um, I don't know how many videos. That, okay, that's cool. Um, the, the one video I saw of a bunch of people running around with knives and blades was actually a wedding because it's like in Yemen, they do those weddings with the scimitars and it was like two <laughs> nice. Um, uh, okay. Uh, so have you, were you just kind of like, were, did you read about this or did you watch stuff about it or did you just kind of absorb stuff from the general conversation? Uh, no, I actually, around? I talked about it a little bit. Uh, my, my understanding was it was a schizophrenic Rwandan gentleman who stabbed like three Swifty girls between the ages of eight and 11. And then it went out that it was a Muslim person. And then a bunch of soccer hooligans started beating the shit out of Asian people in the street. Uh, that mm -hmm. was my, oh, and then also firebombing hotels, which I thought was insane. Yeah. Did, did you get any understanding of why they were doing that? Uh, my understanding was massive anti-immigrant sentiment. Okay. Am I wrong? Uh, no, I just wondered if it was more detailed than that. Like people being upset that they're allowing asylum seekers to stay in hotels or people saying that they're all illegals or people saying that there are a bunch of terrorists in there and shit, but none of that. Well, yes to all of the above, because I, I think right. the, the thing that people are, were pissed about and something that's brought up in American politics as well is I think that New York City has a sanctuary policy. I, I forget what they call it, but it's like a no, no homeless thing where basically if, if there's hotels that have empty beds in the city, they have to accommodate people. And so as a result, some immigrants and asylees and all that kind of stuff are getting state subsidized hotel rooms. And Wait, so, so they, get, they get they get put in the hotel room and then they just get like the whilst other guests are just staying there normally. Uh, I to be honest, I'd have to research the program. But the but the point being that, like, this is obviously co coming at significant taxpayer expense because mm -hmm. I think the hotel people complained. And so as a result, they are getting paid. Right. Uh, so I, I imagine there's something in the UK that's similar where asylees and immigrants are getting substantial amounts of uh, subsidization for their living costs. OK. Um... Do you have any idea? Did you get any impression of why they were getting put into hotels? No, not just regular old centers. Okay. Um, Probably because the centers are full. Yeah, there was a big backlog because the Conservative Party was wasting a whole bunch of money on trying to send them to Rwanda and it failed, obviously, because it was very illegal. <laughs> um, well, but but from my perspective, this actually kind of cuts to the core of the argument, though. Like, why? Why do people have a right, almost a borderline and unfettered right to immigrate? It's not to emigrate, it's to claim asylum. But is that what you mean? I, I guess, but you know, looking at the numbers in the United States, I know Europe and the United States aren't the same, but we we if I remember the numbers correctly, out of like a hundred people who apply for asylum, four are granted. So uh, that, that means like six people are getting kicked back. Well in the UK it's um it's like sixty to seventy percent of them get accepted. So I don't know what happens in the United States. I remember, I, I seem to remember seeing a one in hundred stat before that was complete bullshit, but I forgot, but that was to do with interviews. Well, the, the one that um, I looked at, I think was from the state. So I'm not, I don't think it's total bullshit. Yeah. Um, but basically it was, it was specifically asylees and it was people applying from uh, South and Central America. And so like that, the highest one I think was a, a country that was in an active civil war. It was like Nicaragua. They bumped up to like 20 or 30% acceptance. But then all the other ones like Belize and uh, countries that might be poor but are not at war, it was insanely low percentages. Uh, I don't know. I don't know about the United States. Um, yeah. So but, but, the, but the point is like, is there, 
do, do you think that there's like a moral right to immigrate? Uh, to well, to claim asylum, I, I don't know how else you would do it because the only way to find out if someone's gotten a legitimate asylum claim is if they turn up and get processed. So I don't really know. But if you're getting a situation where like only 5% of asylum claims are getting uh, accepted, then I'd imagine what you would do is, I don't know if you do this in America, but you would have like a, like a pre-vetting system where you kind of go through like a quick check to make sure that it's not just some really obvious thing. Like they just came from fucking like a middle-class lifestyle to have a slightly better life in a different country. But I don't know. Well, that... like, I think that we have a natural deterrent in the UK because claim asylum in the UK fucking sucks. <laughs> yeah. um, like you get fuck all money. You spend like maybe up to a year or more trying to uh, wait for your claim to get processed. I think they give you like seven pounds a day for food, clothing, and uh, toiletries. So mm -hmm. that's the deterrent. So, so, why, so why why, am I hearing from right-wing Brit bongers that, uh, you know, Keir Starmer or whatever and the conservatives were all gung-ho on keeping everyone out, but then as soon as, uh, you know, the Keir Starmer took position, like just boats of immigrants just flooded the... Uh, neither of those Blood things happened. Channel. So the small boat crossings were large before Keir took power. Uh, he was never saying mm -hmm. keep them out. Keir said we're going to reduce uh, legal migration because it's been at unprecedented heights for the last two years, uh, twice mm -hmm. as high as we're used to for net migration for the last couple of years, uh, partly because of Ukrainians, partly Brexit. Uh, but no, his policy was always, we're not going to send them to Rwanda for processing. We're going to process them here. But what we will do is we'll go after smuggling gangs. So we'll try to stop smuggling gangs. But if someone crosses with a boat, uh, we, we let them claim asylum and we let them claim it here. That's Keir Starmer's policy. He never went back um, on anything so far. Okay. And correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, oftentimes, like 2020 was the the year that was cited as like, oh, this is untenable. And it was like 500,000 or 700,000. But wasn't like yeah, 20 yeah. or 30% of that Ukrainians? Uh, yes, a third was Ukrainians for one or two. Yes, there were two years where we had between six and 700,000 people net migration. And yeah, about a third of them were Ukrainians in one year. Yeah, so, I mean, those people what are white used Christians. To is, They're good, right? Yeah. What we're used to is two to 300,000. Yeah. But that's like legal migration. Yeah. So, for, how, so, so how do you, how do you feel? I, I know that you're not, you know, despite appearing white, you're not, uh, uh what, what, you're Syrian? Lebanese. Lebanese. I was close. Um, so you're Who cares about that, right? Connor? 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 You're not voting for Kamala Harris. Uh, not What's wrong Lebanese with you? Man is an official part of the platform. Are you serious, not. dude? Wait, wait. Are, are yeah, you go talk to your fucking boss and get them to take that cringe shit off the platform. What are you talking about? So, number one, you acknowledge that it would be preferable to have Kamala Harris as president than Donald Trump, correct? Probably, yeah. Probably. Why are you being a little weasel all of a sudden? I thought that you were part of democracy. Why am I being a weasel all of a sudden? Yeah. I'll why are you being you, a weasel? I'll tell you why. Because this is like a this is like a vegetarian voting against vegetarianism. That's why. It's like what are a, you? It's like an abortion <laughs> person. It, it's like it's like a person who's like very pro-choice, having to vote pro-life for for the sake of. Uh, it's a very simple question. Election. Do you acknowledge Kamala Harris is the better option vis-a-vis -vis Donald Trump? Sure. Okay, then why wouldn't you vote for the better option? Because if I, in any way, contributed to an assault weapons ban, I would eat my own gun. What about if you, in any way, contributed to the election of Donald Trump? Then I, I can't say that because of terms of service. Well, here's the thing. If you're saying, <laughs> you're essentially saying that you care more about the Second Amendment than Donald Trump ending democracy yeah that's right that's right uh, because because here's the thing i actually i would have gone to the debate yesterday and i felt like i could have been a pretty passionate uh right-wing argumentative side because i think that while donald trump poses a threat to democracy i think our republic is strong enough to survive a second presidency uh, what do you think is more important the right to vote or the right to bear arms Ah, uh, the right to bear arms, like like by a million percent. Holy shit! That's, yeah. What is wrong with you? <laughs> what's wrong with me? I know where power comes from. That's where that's what's wrong with me. Well, from so you think it's civilians with guns? It it comes from any gun. From fucking yeah. Cleus with his uh, fucking pickup truck and his little fucking Glock. I don't know that's if I'm right. saying any of these words properly. Yes, I don't know yeah, if that, that, that's that's right. that's correct. Force the the ability to implement your agenda is power 100 in the in the more d diffused power is 
oftentimes the better people are. So you're like a fascist. You'd rather live in a fascist dictatorship where you have your gun rights as opposed to a democracy where like maybe you could vote to have guns or vote not to have guns. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. But it sounded like you made a democracy argument for that because you're talking about power, right? Like the guns are to do with power. So like you lose your protection against tyranny. Is that like the problem? Or Yeah, that's it. Like, like the, the biggest irony of this entire thing, like I know Pisco loves to come and he didn't get me all riled up. He has like a very <laughs> talent for it. Uh, but the, because this is the, this is the silliest shit in the world. So, so, so Trump is an existential threat to democracy. Yeah. Okay. He, he's on the verge of at minimum fucking over brown and black people to a degree unprecedented in history. I don't know and why you're going also, there, but okay. And, and he also hates the transes. Is that, mm -hmm. is that approximately true? Um, I wouldn't put it in those terms. I don't know. My, my, my complaints have never been kind of identity based. I do think that he's a risk to trans uh, gender people. Yes. And I do think that he's racist, but I don't, I don't know that that's why I'm worried about him. Why are you worried about him? I'm worried about him because he tried to overthrow the last election and thereby end democracy in America. And he, there's a risk that he could do similar things in the future. Okay. Uh, and you seem to acknowledge that too. <clears throat> and, and you actually like bit the dumber bullet. You were like, yes, I'd rather live in an authoritarian dictatorship with guns than in a democracy where like people yeah, cho you, chose you, you to vote. Why? Be because in, in the case of fire, uh, you have a fire extinguisher. In the case of a tyranny, you have firearms. So being like, hey, Connor, do you want to get rid of the fire? Do you want to get rid of your fire extinguisher while there's a fire? The answer is no. And it's like, do you want to live in a house without fire extinguishers? The answer is also no. So the, you, you literally would rather live in dictatorship America than like in the United Kingdom or Australia? Well, I, yes. Oh, yeah. hundred percent all day. The, the, problem with the, the problem with tyranny is that if someone rises to tyranny, they probably have followers, and those followers also have guns, right? Like, it's it's not yeah. just you and the fucking uh, rice banner and the KPD right, fight. So, hold on, like, hold on. So, if we want to <laughs> take, like, take this out of the realm, it, let, let, let's, talk about it, let's talk about it in context for what's actually going on in society, okay? MAGA is 15% of the population, maybe 20% of the population. Even in a dictatorship run by MAGA, where uh, Donald Trump somehow convinces the population to go along with him having unlimited terms, which I don't think is possible. Um, yeah, you, you want firearms in that scenario. Connor, you're, you're going down the harder the path. Connor, What's you're that? going down the harder path. You've already bit the bullet on the stronger version of this. So we don't need to get into reality. You just said, I would rather live in a dictatorship where I get to keep my guns than in the United Kingdom. And, and the presumption being, of course, that there would be resistance to the fascist government, right? Yeah, but the resistance is going to be like <sighs> you and Antifa, like who the fuck versus what the Proud Boys and the Oath Keepers and shit like that, bro. Like, my, in terms of a fucking armed struggle for power, like MAGA's got you guys, Jesus. Well, so go, I, go I think there's Trump, plenty. Wait, why aren't hold you going for hold Trump? On, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Shut up, shut up. Um, I think that a healthy chunk of Republicans are constitutionalists. And I think that constitutional Republicans and uh, I'm trying to think of another group and libertarians would not be, you know, they, they, they wouldn't be friendly to a Trump dictatorship. Every American libertarian I've ever met would love a Trump dictatorship. But I think, well, oh, wait, who the fuck are these libertarians? AKA <laughs> are you, you, are you, like, are you, you. Like principled or philosophical or, or are you talking about like, Twitter ones because because I don't think Bruh. there's like a single I don't think there's like a the single same. principled libertarian that would be like oh yeah I love dictatorship it's my favorite well you just said that you care more about guns than voting that you'd rather live yeah. in a dictatorship with guns than the United Kingdom um and I just have to like like what you should vote for Trump then why don't you vote for Trump uh because he tried to suspend the Constitution and I'm a constitutionalist but the Constitution also includes like rights to have republics and not dictatorships. So why do you, why are you valuing the second amendment, your version of the second amendment over like all the other important bits of the constitution, namely like the Republic of it? Because I think, because I think it's foundational. Gun rights. 
Yeah. So, like, we, you know we have, like, an automatic weapon ban in the United States? Yep. I mean, I, I think, it, I think even, <laughs> I think, here, here, I'll go further, Pisco. I think that you could pass an assault weapons ban and civilians could be, pa could, they could be limited to bolt action rifles, lever action rifles, and revolvers, and they could still destroy the federal government. But that doesn't, that's not getting to like the heart of the criticism here. And, and just so you're aware, the text of the Second oh, Amendment says, I, I'll get there. It says, a well regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state. You just want to bypass that. And then it talks about the right to bear arms. You want to bypass oh, that and just get oh, rid of the free on, state. Before you move you just on, want to get rid of the free state. The can you read the, the right half? of the people to, to keep and bear arms shall right not who? be infringed? The right of the, the people right to who? keep and bear arms. The right of the people to keep and bear arms. I'm, listen, I'm not arguing. I'm not arguing that the Second Amendment isn't an individual right. I'm not arguing that right now. Okay. Okay. What I mean is, just wanted to make sure that clear to the, the audience. The purpose, the purpose of the Second Amendment is to have the security of a free state. You just want to get rid of the free state. No, I don't. Well, I very just, much want the free state. Sorry, given the choice between a free state and a gunless state, you would get rid of the the free state if it meant keep keeping your guns. Uh, hold on. Can you literally just read the amendment again? A well-regulated militia be necessary to the security of a free state. The right of the people to keep oh. and bear arms shall not be infringed. So, so you want to eliminate the well-regulated militia? I don't want to get rid of. I don't want to get state. rid of. I don't want to get rid of the well-regulated militia. I'm not saying that we should ban all guns, but what I am well, saying is, hey, we already banned some guns, and it's not like our freedom has gone away. Don't you have to make? Uh, Whoa! Yeah. So you think our automatic weapons ban, like that, was just as bad, or I'm sorry, that that was incompatible with American republicanism? That ban? No, I don't. No, I don't. I'm not. I'm not Why wouldn't an assault weapons ban be incompatible with American republicanism? It's not. I I I already said that you could probably still fulfill the requirement of the Second Amendment with 19th century technology. I just think then, that then is, why aren't you going to vote for that. Kamala? Is, is Destiny back? I was trying to entertain the I was trying to entertain the audience. I don't know is, if he's back, but, but why wouldn't you just vote for Kamala then if it, if you don't if all it would take is to have like older weaponry to fulfill the requirement of it? Why because, aren't you voting for her? Okay, so so let's say let, let's uh, I'm going to run it back. Allow me to narrativeize it. Let's say that the it was opposed, right? Uh, Hillary Clinton was an existential threat to the United States of America. So Democrats had to vote for Trump, right? And Trump said that he was going to leave abortion alone. But you are in an avid pro-choice person. And you know that Trump has people in his cabinet who are going to go after abortion. Would in 2016, are you mm -hmm. going to take the risk to pull the lever, not to be neutral, not to not show up for your party, but to actively vote for the opposing party, knowing that you will bear some level of culpability if, God forbid, he appoints a bunch of justices who then repeal Roe versus Wade. Are you pulling that lever? Yeah, so I'm going to answer your question just to make sure I understand it. It's like if there was an existential threat to like the structure, but the person who was the opposition to the existential threat L let's promised like to go after. Potential existential, but yes. Okay, sure. The person who was in opposition to that was like um, promising to go after a right I very much cared about. Fair? Yes. Y yeah, I'm like a consequentialist in that regard. If I think that the president is going to, you know, do a, some bad things, if it's a choice between some bad things and like the worst possible thing, I'm going to go for the quote unquote lesser evil. And I think that you would too. And you started this conversation by saying, I actually think Kamala Harris is the lesser evil, or I. I probably think that she's a lesser evil. And so why wouldn't you just vote for her? Be, because th this kind of gets into like the, the Fabian Liberty thing we were talking about him earlier tonight. Uh, there, there's some there's some principles that you just can't violate. And, and, and this is one of mine. Like you, you can call me a freak for it if you want. But I think I don't think that this is a fun right to have. I don't think it's a, a quirk of American culture. I don't think it's just something cute from our, uh, you know, something quaint and cute from our past. I view it as culturally foundational. Okay. I guess democracy is as well, though, right? No, it's not. 
uh, d- democracy in, yes, in America. Guns are more popular. Okay. No, as, as a matter of fact, what you know. So what's what's interesting is there. There's a lot of things that I would revert to like a 19th century understanding. Now I'm not saying that I wouldn't like. Uh, so so for instance, like we we have a democracy, quote unquote, in the United States, right? Like a republic. Right. Yeah. Um, but the Republic started out exclusively for white landowning men. Yeah. You would, right? you would go back to that as well. You're saying. So the guns are to no, pretend you from tyranny, no. but it's no. not tyranny in place Hold of democracy. On. That's fairly right. Like it's okay. Okay. Go. I'm just saying what you sa- got up. I'm not a Saturday morning cartoon villain. Jesus okay. Christ. So no, I, I obviously wouldn't go back to a race based metric for voting. Um, but I would go to a meritocratic or competence based uh, metric for voting so you're all day, every day. Uh, be, because I want, I want competency in the voting public. You, you want like, like poll tests. You want like, yeah, I want, I want a competency test to be able to vote hundred percent. Oh, you don't want poor people to vote. Maybe not landowner. You're like JD Vance. If, if he is in favor of this particular thing, maybe. Would you want to give like more voting rights to people who have children? Uh, no, I, I think that's cringe. Should be adults. But, yeah, but, but you... no. So for so for instance, let's say let's say that we we eliminated the material conditions that makes people of different demographic groups, um, you know, ca- capable of high, having higher and and lower levels of education, and um, also like so if, we, if we resolve race as much as possible. What's that? If we resolved race, if we resolved racism and systemic whatever, right? Yeah. Well, and I, I would actually like to solve racism and systemic whatever. Glad um, to hear it. So, so I would like to solve systemic racism and and whatever. And then, yeah, I, I think that you should have a basic understanding of American history. You should have a basic understanding of our civics. You should have a basic understanding of voting and what it does. And you should also have a basic understanding of secondary and tertiary impacts of legislation. Hundred percent. I'm pissed at you and now. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be angry. Don't understand the words that I said, then I don't want you to vote. I'm I'm super angry at you right now, and I'm super pissed because everything that you're saying shows what you right. value, and essentially you're in favor of putting a lot of restrictions on the right to vote. But you don't want to put any restrictions on the right to bear arms. You don't want to have an assault weapons ban, fully automatic. You literally want to have I'm all okay these examinations. I'm, I'm okay with there being a higher tier for ownership for fully automatic weapons and destructive devices. Um, but but Pisco, do you, do you know why I, I actually, I prioritize it this way? It's because voting is like the state enforcing its edicts is violence. It's just violence extended through the state. So when you have incompetent, idiotic, moronic people voting for things that they don't understand, they're voting for other people with guns to enforce that. And by externalizing risk to a third party, especially an omnipotent, omniscient, you know, obviously the government isn't that. You sound like Anakin Skywalker right now. You sound like Anakin. Why? I haven't bought, bought, brought peace and justice to my new empire. You're like on a big gondola or whatever. Or you're riding an animal. You're like, I don't believe in democracy. I think people are stupid. I hate sand. That's what you sound like right now. Well, I, I agree with all three of those things. You're like arguing for a monarchy or an Illuminati. Or a republic? Or a republic? What, what, what does a republic do, Pisco? What, what's the Both. difference between a straight democracy and a republic? As I understand the terms, a pure democracy is where the people directly vote on things, and a republic is where people vote on people to vote on things. Yeah, that's right. And make I decisions. Want a representative democracy. I want the best and brightest of the United States of America to become representatives of the interest of their constituents. And then I want to, them to vote both. I, I largely want them to vote their conscience in order to make sure that the Republic is healthy and strong. Yes, that's correct. I believe in that. I am a Republican. Yeah. So Except you would... Uh, these gun rights are to defend you from tyranny This, this earlier, shouldn't be, this that shouldn't tyranny be a shock. Trump, people getting their voting rights taken away. Uh, like the tyranny I mean, of the no, not... and chosen over the, the non-educated and chosen, right? Uh, yeah. Yep, you're right. Mm-hmm. 
Yep. I, I believe that there is a, a, I believe that there are different qualities of people more and less intelligent, more and less physically fit, oh. more and less educated, more and less everything. And I think that people should run for office, be elected by their peers, and then they should make decisions based off of their conscience in line with what they think is best for the whole. That's correct. So should the mentally, um, let's say the lower bottom 30 percentile of IQ be allowed to vote in America? No. <laughs> okay. Okay. As a matter of fact, I, I step I, away I, I and shit goes crazy. That, what happened? What did I miss? I would borderline say that's part of the problem. Is dumb people voting? Jesus yes. Christ. Bro, what is wrong with you? You have problems. You want to give up, like, our, democ our republic for guns. No, I don't. I want to maintain the republic through guns. Wait, how would the republic be maintained through guns? The, this is like, I, I gotta go. I was trying to entertain people while you were taking a <laughs> shit. And then you said that you, would, you think that the right to bear arms is more important than the right to vote. I, I do. I absolutely do. And I also explained to you how. And I explained to, to you that the right to vote is not important at all. <laughs> no, I, I think the right to vote is incredibly important because whenever you vote... You are voting for an, exter an external authority to enforce your will. I think it's incredibly important. That's why I want to limit who has access to it. So if it's more important, why don't you vote for Trump? Wait, wait, wait. Sorry. You're going to have to explain to me your logic for that. Yeah, sure. You said that the right to bear arms is more important than the right to vote. Uh -huh. Donald Trump, for all his faults, I think, and for, I, did, I think he did try to limit some gun rights with the bump stock ban, but I do think in general he's more in favor of the Second Amendment than, uh, or more in favor yeah, of gun rights. Yeah, because he wants to destroy another. the entire order of things. Yeah, but the, you the, just the entire... said you'd rather that be, you, you'd rather vote for someone, or you'd rather have a situation in which you have a literal dictator. I asked you this question, you answered it. I asked, uh, would you rather have a dictator where you have guns, or a democracy with like less, much less guns? And, or no guns. Well, you, you used the UK as an example. Yeah, I said America as a dictatorship or living in UK, and you said I would pick the dictatorship to live in. Yeah, and then the, the inference that I also explained to you earlier was the fact that there would be resistance to the dictator. And then also, what, what I would point to while, you know, also trying to get off the phone in the next few minutes, we can, we can table this for another time. Yeah. Um, but what I would say is, yeah, when you have the government interfering with people's access to finances because they're engaged in protest i think that is fucked up that's in canada and then when you have uh people posting shit to social media that would be legal in the united states but they're being incarcerated for years in the united kingdom yeah i would rather take a dangerous country in which the the right to keep and bear arms is available to all citizens and therefore there will be resistance to tyranny versus just being in a, a comfortable tyranny of the majority then move to russia 100%. what's that then move to russia that's a dictatorship that's what you want here sorry no that's what you would choose not. here that's why i'm not voting you... for trump also, if you're also, Pisco, you have to bear in mind, I, I respect your intelligence and your ability to read things and argue passionately and all that kind of stuff. But you have to understand, like, do, do you think that your argument is nonsensical? So it, do you think that when the United States was first founded, was it not a republic? I think it was a republic. Yeah. Keep in mind, so if, it was so, founded so, before the uh -huh. Second Amendment. The Second Amendment is an amendment sure. to the Constitution. Hold on. Wait, we were so, founded yeah. as a democracy, too. Sure. I'm not, sure. I'm not arguing against that. What do we are? I don't know. But, 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 the fran but the franchise was limited in the early years. What franchise? Uh, the, the, ability right to vote. To the, the right to vote. The Republic was limited as well. Like, what, I don't understand what the point is. Yeah. But so was the Second Amendment. The, I mean, the, the Second the point, Amendment didn't apply to any state regulations. And we didn't have that until 2010. <laughs> Actually, pretty sure Heller I, was I, 2009. I, Idiot. Idiot. No, also, I'm pretty sure that you were earlier. You said that you weren't going to argue that it wasn't an individual right. Fuck. I actually think it was. No, no, no. I'm not saying Fuck. it's not an individual right right now. I'm, what I'm saying is, the right has been. Was it? Was it before Heller? Was, before Heller, we did not have a Supreme Court case on point recognizing the Second Amendment as an individual right. I said I didn't want to get into that because it's a, it's a long argument. But it, but certainly oh. before before the 21st century that Second Amendment right was not incorporated to apply to state governments. We had cases in this, in various states, like Texas and others, 
that tried to um, that limited the right to have access to guns. And the Second Amendment did not protect those abilities because everyone understood initially the Second Amendment did not apply to the state governments. Yeah, and what, so what, what were the do you have the examples of those limitations? Yeah, so Texas banned, I believe, in the 1860s after the Civil War when they had some Republican administrations, they banned certain open carrying, uh, the open carry possession of guns. The Sullivan Act in the 1890s in New York um, was is like the first modern kind of gun control statute. The Second Amendment did not protect against those things. Okay. Uh, yeah, sure. But I, I think that we would argue since then that, you know, the this, uh, this Constitution has been affirmed as like the supreme law of the land and that the phrasing of the Se Second Amendment involves, you know, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. I'm not fighting you on that, Connor. What I'm fighting is that this okay. is more important than the right to vote and the foundations of our it republic. Is. You're acting as though the Second Amendment, as it is, is more important than the republic itself. I, I'm saying I'm saying it's foundational to the Republic. So is the Republic. The Republic is foundational to the Republic. If you lose the Republic, but you don't, you if you keep the Republic, but you lose the ability for the population to check the government, you only have like dictatorship in waiting. But if you, you're literally saying you prefer an actual dictatorship in presence, one which could be resisted against. I mean, you have to go. I have to go. You're, I'm just you're, you're, you're saying you're saying that I'm simping for Trump, and I'm obviously not. I don't. I don't you're understand. Asking, I feel like what, what could if you lost the right to vote, wouldn't the next thing they take just be your guns? Well, if you think I that if that was the merit, only thing a that meritocratic uh, ability to vote. He wants like a limited right to vote to people who are intelligent enough, basically, right? And capable yes. enough. So the question is, is what do you do? How do you deal with the issue of people who uh, pass this intelligence threshold uh, only voting in their interests to basically kick the ladder away from underneath them so the people below them will never reach the right threshold to get uh, eligible to vote, which well, is basically I, what happens in those situations. Well, I don't think so. I think there's plenty of republics that have functioned with limited franchise, sometimes for thousands of years. Uh, but wait, the, what's wait, one? Wait, which which republics lasted thousands of years of limited franchise? Well, excuse me, I should have said hundreds. <laughs> excuse me. Which which republics lasted hundreds, hundreds of years of limited franchise? Rome lasted okay. hundreds and, of and years anything, as a republic. Is there anything in like recent history, like maybe the last thousand years? Okay, th this is this is something that I want you and uh, everyone to take away from this conversation, and also I I, I do have to run. And I'm yeah. happy to do, I'm happy, like, like very happy to have a conversation with anybody who wants to participate in this conversation, like at any time. Okay. I don't think that we are discrete creatures somehow evolved past the, the, like the political foibles of 2000 years ago. I think that technology and culture have evolved, but the way that human beings function has not. And so when you're saying like, oh, well, something recently or whatever, I think all of the problems of power and politics that existed 2000 years ago or 3000 years ago, I think they exist, exist exactly, almost exactly the same now. Like distribution of power, who's in charge, how do you balance power, what's the right of people to keep weapons, how do you deal with self-defense? These are all problems of the ancient world as much as they are. Well, this is well, this is true. The problem with limited, the problem with these like limited uh, franchise republics, including the Roman Republic, is that you deal with a mass that is obviously very unhappy with that situation they're put in, which is why the Roman Republic didn't really get by without massive fucking suppression of slave rebellions and etc. Same with uh, even like in modern democracies, like in the UK, limited franchise meant you had people rioting and fighting to the the fucking ends of the earth for their right to vote eventually and then they you know they it just seems then to be we had julius caesar it became a dictatorship well if if you guys uh if you want to come to me with a at a different time want to come to me with a historical argument that we should let retards vote because it's better in the long term <laughs> then i'll consider it well wouldn't the argument right. just be that america is the strong do we agree that america is the strongest most dominating country that's existed in the history of the planet or no well we're very young we're very young well, we're not, I mean, we have the oldest surviving constitution of any country that exists on the planet right now. I mean, technology's evolved well, listen, quite a bit in the this past. Is, this is part of the, this is where I feel like I'm getting gaslit. Are we on the verge of losing our republic to a dictator? Um, if you vote for Trump, maybe. Who knows? Maybe. The problem is Trump doesn't believe foundationally in things like democracy or like republic, republicanism is what it's called. Republicanism. But he yeah. doesn't believe yeah, in either of those things. Right? Yeah, and yeah, you recognize so, that, Connor. Connor, you recognize that you say that I, I was going to say that. Preferred. 
I, I was going to say, Donald Trump, philosophically, is not a Republican. He's a populist right winger. So I cannot and will not vote for Donald Trump. But if a Democrat is promising me that they're going to undermine what I view as like a fundamental and foundational part of our country, then I can't in good conscience be like, oh, yeah, lesser of two evils. Let's go. Well, but when you say fundamentally undermine them saying that I want Congress to pass legislation, that's not fundamentally undermining, right? Like we're talking uh, about like a movement that would involve the entire legislature passing listen, a law. I, to... I, I, I do feel it getting more interesting and I want to contribute. It's just that I legitimately do have other things I have to do today. Okay. So okay. at any point, if we want to reconvene the, the cabal for this conversation, I am happy to do so. Okay. Uh, You're a piece of crap. Damn. It's okay, please go. Fuck you. I love you, but I also hate you so goddamn much. He Say left. it back. <sighs> he left. He you did. son of a bitch. He dipped. Okay, well, then, then, Destiny, I love you and hate you in equal measure. Say it back. Okay, I love you too. Be careful. Take All care, right. Guys. Catch you soon. Bye. Okay, wow. Team is right. I mean, the Trump team is right. The Supreme Court's made clear if there's a, um, an open immunity issue, that needs to be litigated before anything else happens. And there's no good law enforcement reason why the sentencing has to take place prior to the election. I mean, the Trump... Okay, why was I like this? Or I might have just clicked the link in chat. Connor with some insane bullets on your stream earlier. Destiny worth rewatching. Okay. Why? If you're going to make a signal for help in public with the person right next to you, at that point, you probably can just shout, no? Or I don't. Okay. Thanks, Duke of Luffy. Anne Crank got clipped by Adolf Rizzler when Adolf Rizzler captured Pleasant Park. Anne Crank was a new Nintendo Switch player. Anne Crank and her family hid in the basement under the stairs in a house in Pleasant Park for over two seasons so Rizzler's army wouldn't find her. While in hiding, Anne Crank wrote her famous diary describing her hiding. Fortunately, Rizzler's army found her and full pieced her before she could even react. And then Adolf Rizzler spammed stink bombs in the box. And Crank got knocked and Rizzler and his army took the L on her until she got sent back to the lobby. Ow. Hold on, I'm gonna send this to my kid so I seem like I'm cool and hip. <sighs> Guy attempts to pass a slower car in front of him. Ooh. Jesus. <laughs> Got him. Jesus. A 
Hassan accused the journalist of being your fan for not agreeing with him. Candace ever respond? Uh, I can join, but I, it's if I even am allowed in, it's probably going to be like insta muting. But we can try it, sure. And then you're going after people. Any person that says something reasonable, like innocent children, should not be killed. They, the people should not be growing up in the circumstances these children that they are growing up in in Gaza. And oh, cool! And it's fucking at no fucking volume. Pretend that those of us who are recognizing that murdering children is wrong, innocent children is completely wrong calling all of us crazy, calling all of us unhinged. Like, this is actually an unhinged perspective to have, that you can just kill every last Palestinian. I wasn't familiar with that, the uh, downed liner that you were talking about, Dan, so thanks for interjecting that. Andrew, in regards to the USS Liberty, in regards to Operation Northwoods, by the way, the name of the book that I uh, brought up that was written by the person who was in the Mossad um, was called by way of deception and he spoke about this that wow, they nice, believe cute. that their their motto is that you can deceive and you can get what you want and turning kind of nations against each other but you're kind of like the hand that's orchestrating all of that you know when you hear that and you hear all of this andrew how does that make you feel as somebody who you know believes in zionism as a political philosophy well i agree i agree with what you've been saying in that uh these are people who are co-opting all of Jewry, all of Judaism, and trying to make it their voice. Like Netanyahu, when he held up a Talmud, Netanyahu doesn't even keep Shabbat. You can go and look up what the Torah says about not keeping Shabbat and uh, what the penalty is that for a Jew. So Netanyahu, Netanyahu holding up the Talmud, he's insincere. He's and insincere. These psychos, and these NWO freaks that want to co-opt all of Jews and hold us up as a human shield. That's why I'm doing this. I agree with your theory that these people are trying to speak for us, and they should not be allowed to speak for us. And I want to thank Dan for retracting his call for war, because what we need is peace. The only thing at the RNC that was discussed was uh, bombing Iran. Damn, this guy's even got my old block. Holy shit. Is this, hello? Who is this guy? I can't hear anything. Libertarians were said, this is uh, before Trump was shot at. The so Dave Smith, Libertarian, you know, they got to answer for their. I don't know why this is lagging on this computer. All right, uh, Andrew, quick question, if you don't mind again. I have many. I'm sure as an. I don't know why this is so laggy. I don't know if I can listen. Or maybe we're going to listen over here. Maybe it won't like over here. A monumental failure of intelligence, which is, of course, impossible. But let's pretend it happened organically. The chance of it happening again must be near zero. So surely peace is just to stop blowing up the children, right? That's peace. What, what can the Palestinians do? They're going to get across the border again. Are they going to get more paragliders? Is that what we believe? Surely peace is just to stop blowing up the kids right now. Bam, done, if they want peace. Correct. And stop invading the West Bank as well. Stealing That's land. right. So if they stop killing everybody and if they stop invading and taking people's land, then the peace comes, right? So surely the burden of peace is on the Israelis who are failing, correct? And the only way we're going to get to that is, as I believe Dave Smith said, if we don't have American support for war, it will inevitably end in peace. So everybody listening to this can literally help create peace by supporting Trump, but with the premise he must be the pro-peace president that we elected in 2016. And I'm not Israeli, but I'll attempt to answer all of it. I think that we absolutely have to look at Israel as a nation state dependent on us. We're giving them aid. We're giving them weapons. So if we're dependent on, if they're dependent on us, then it's up to us to create the peace. And the only way you're going to get that call for peace, demand both sides, start engaging in it and look at to look to who are possibly going to be the next president of the United States. Kamala Harris, part of the complete uh, globalist cabal, total puppet. They want war. They want to divide and conquer all of us. 
Trump, who's an independent, literally was shot at. Uh, the, the CIA definitely involved. The Secret Service stood down. So that is a man that's for peace. And all of the people in the dissident right that's, I don't know if I'm going to vote. By the way, I hate Israel. If you hate Israel, why would you not vote for the only man that gives us a chance at peace? And that's that's one of the big reasons I like talking about this. We have a I chance to create speak, peace there's right no now. Way she's and I think people are a little unfocused on how to get there. Why don't you feel or why do you think the APAC does not have to register with FARA? I don't feel that at all. They should. <laughs> okay, so, but why do you think that is? Because, I mean, a logical extension of the fact that APAC does not have to register with FARA, you can go to trackapac.com and see how every single senator on both sides of the dichotomy is taking money from Israel. Surely we're an occupied nation and Israel is effectively running the American government currently. Would you agree? Uh, I think they're one of many factions. People don't talk about the Qatar money. There's a whole great documentary called Blood Money by my friends uh, John Dutois and Scooter Downey. Well, I know, and I know this very well. Qatar invests in infrastructure projects, and they try and use that political leverage to get what they want Sam, because that's what investment Sam is. Investment's up. not being a what nice a person. Sam investment is typically building infrastructure and then trying to lean on it politically, and every single nation in the world does that. But Qatar doesn't openly hand piles of cash to senators. I don't know that that's true. I think you should watch the documentary Blood Money. And they're not the only ones, by the way. We are puppeted by people. Stop talking about the British like they have no influence. They literally sent a spy, Christopher Steele, to try and derail the Trump administration. So there's the British, there's the Chinese, there's Qatar. There's all number of players in this global NWO trying to puppet the America, steer us off course. Israel, there is an issue there, obviously. But to, po to focus on them solely and not look at Okay, there's this wide range of issues. That's how we are getting divided and conquered. They use our momentum. I understand, I understand your point. What, what you're saying. Sorry, go on, Dan. I, I was just, you know, what you're saying sounds great, like this whole peace thing and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, it's also these guys. But we're not fighting wars for the U.K. We're not fighting wars for Saudi. Like, if you look at what, how we are acting and who is controlling our country, it all points back to Israel. I mean, what, you know, Epstein Island was not an accident. Like, him being killed was not an accident. Nobody being prosecuted wasn't an accident. Like, that was a Mossad operation, so they have dirt on our U.S. politicians. And because of that, you know, because of this dirt— because of these bribes, because of the money that's coming in, they're uh, controlling I'll our government. I'll sit here until 425. The of the problem, saying, oh, like, we're going to tell Trump that we want peace, and then Trump's going to have peace. It's just bullshit. I mean, it sounds great and whatever, but, like, that's not the real world. The real world is these people are controlling our government, and that's not going to fucking stop by us telling Trump he needs to call. And I'll say that, 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 that was the only government... government Sorry, to piggyback what Dan said, I think there's another very important point. You talk about a U.K. spy... Well, espionage is illegal. And you talk about Qatari blood money. Well, that's once again illegal. People went to jail for that. I think in the EU, they tried to bribe somebody with cash and people went to jail. The point we're making here is that APAC can do this with impunity, legal impunity, and they're the only people who can do it. So why is Israel allowed to bribe our politicians and own our government with legal impunity? And any other nation that attempts to do that at least will face consequences of the law. I, why I don't can Israel just buy us? I don't agree they're the only ones allowed to do it without impunity. Fang Fang is a Chinese spy. We all know her name. No charges ever for anything like that. So just because uh, you're, you're saying that, oh, APAC isn't your request to, to speak? Yes, I did. I'm on my main account. I don't know why you retards think I'm, I'm logged into my alternate account over here. Like I'm not requesting that. on my and alternate account over here. It's a different account on my main computer. Point? Come on. Let me finish one point. Dan Bilzerian saying that uh, the only country we're going to war with is Israel. Uh, if you forget... The Taliban were destroying the opium in Afghanistan. We went to Afghanistan to protect the opium. That money got laundered through HSBC. That money goes straight to the UK, Britain. So if you think the only nation puppeting us for war is Israel, you're, you're just not that deep into this. No offense. I just I did also want to speak about the also the blanket statement when people say Israel's the most moral army in the world, because that's another one that I'm just trying to, like, comprehend why people started saying that. Um, to, back in 2002, I believe it was, uh, you know, the Israeli troops decided to take over Palestinian TV stations and start playing pornography um, as a weapon of war. And when you consider that this is, has as this, being used, has this ever war, happened? Can somebody source me this? I don't believe a single thing she says. Um, of the introduction of <sighs> pornography into American Without fact society, checking it. and and please correct me, Andrew, if I'm wrong, is pornography still banned in Israel? Do they eventually ban pornography? I have no idea. That's a good question. Okay, I'm not. I'm not positive on that. 
Um, but some of the these issues, then you, you talk about, you know, blackmail, pornography, and we know for a fact that there have been tons of, you know, blackmail things that have taken place, whether they involved the Mossad, and of course, talking about Jeffrey Epstein, we do know the Mossad was involved in that, and there's absolutely no accountability. Do you think the reason for that is because Israel has secured, through mechanisms of blackmail, um, a stranglehold on all the people that are in office today? And I, by the way, I believe that there are some commentators um, who, and, and, and you know, somebody like Destiny who's popped up here, which is, I won't have him on because I don't think it's fair to the Zionist lobby to, to have on a sexual deviant as a representative. Got um, it. Gotcha. I will say all that right, like, there we go. I believe that they have, like, they're capturing. All right. They have no argument. So the one talking point that they're bringing up here, the idea that, um, the idea that AFPAC or not AFPAC, that APAC doesn't register uh, as a foreign agent or register as FARA or FAR FARA. The reason why is because it's a, it's a local, it's a domestic U.S. lobbying group. There's no reason they would have to, but none of them know that. Um, they assume that it takes money from the Israeli government. There's no proof of that. It's just a, it's a lobbying firm that exists in the United States. You have no evidence, no proof that they take money from the Israeli government. Uh, if Israel was going to funnel money illegally into the United States, why would you do it with a thing that has to do with advocating for Israel? Why would you funnel it illegally to other things that aren't screaming Israeli lobbyist group? Um, yeah. Um, she brought up the, uh, what was the other thing? The USS Liberty. People think that, uh, Israel blew up the USS Liberty intentionally during the six day war to, I heard different reasons why either because, um, either because they say that Israel was trying to bait America into the war or because America was observing horrific war crimes that Israel didn't want the world to see. So they blew it up, it's, yeah, it's, but there's no proof or evidence from this, of this happening intentionally either. Uh, yeah, it's all just dumb conspiracy shit. Okay, I think we are doing, what was the porn thing about? I, I don't know, I don't think it's true. I just Googled it real quick and it says, some residents in Ramallah complained that there was porn being broadcast on some seized TVs in 2002. I don't think there was a recording of this or any, I, I would be curious to seeing other evidence of it, but yeah. You What is this? Campus. Bro, I want to know if this motherfucker was in Destiny's community. I'll say it. Who is he mad at right now? NPR. Cornell University student sentenced anti-Semitic tweets. He believed wrongly that the posts would prompt a blowback against what he perceived as anti-Israel media coverage and pro-Hamas settlement or sentiment on campus, she wrote. Patrick's flawed logic as a result of his autism, his intentions were the exact opposite of the public's perception. Patrick is not anti-Semitic and is not violent. I don't know what this story is about. Damn, I got NPR journalists on my paywall now. Or in my, uh... Hamas genocidal beliefs and garner support for Israel. He believed wrongly that the post would prompt a blowback against what he perceived as anti-Israel media coverage and pro-Hamas sentiment on campus. Bro, I want to know if this motherfucker was in Destiny's community. I'll say it. I want to know so bad if this motherfucker... Oh, he's talking about the person here, not the writer? I don't, I don't even know. We're even... We're straight up a Destiny fan because, you know, maybe not. I'm not saying he is 100%, but it just... There's a lot of stuff here that uh, it, it feels like he could have been. It would not, let's just say it would not shock me if he was. I love that his, his legal defense is that he was just doing propaganda for Israel. <laughs> he does not hate Jews. He is autistic and thought he was doing propaganda for Israel. Federal prosecutors countered their sentencing memorandum that the degree of disruption to the university rose to the level of substantial. Yeah, of course. He literally said he was going to literally, like, bring an assault rifle to campus and kill Jews. Of course, that was, like, an insane hate crime. Like, it is... A that sounds like a Hassan fan. <laughs> a terroristic threat and a hate crime altogether. 
It is impossible for the court or anyone other than the defendant to know for certain what truly motivated the defendant at the time he made his horrific post, but his self-serving post hoc claims that they were designed to garner sympathy for the group he was threatening repeatedly in the vilest way imaginable is contradicted by both these threats themselves as well as the apology he issued after posting them. There may not be enough time for Dai's team to appeal. Citing his developmental disabilities and time served, people said he asked the court to sentence Dai to supervised release rather than additional imprisonment. He pled autism, yes. She told NPR she wants to appeal to hate crime related enhancements to his sentence, but the timing of that process is not really conduct, uh, conducive to being heard before he's actually going to be released. He has six months, roughly six months left to serve. People says Dai is ashamed of his actions, but also hopeful that he will get the support services he needs. He loves cleaning. He discovered, he discovered that while he's been in custody, she said, adding he's talked about potentially starting his own cleaning business. It's craziness. Friedman, the U.S. attorney, wrote in a court filing that the government hopes dies per perpetrated newfound insights into his mental health issues will allow him in the future to re-engage with society in a healthy, productive manner. Yeah. <sighs> it's crazy. Crazy. Yeah, he loves cleaning. He just wants to put on white sheets. Clean white sheets. Imagine it was a brown person, lol. Yeah, I mean, dude. Dude, this has happened time and time again. Here's a vid of die Look, pleading. Here's, here's a vid of die pleading guilty. Look, here's the thing. Fine. Listen, I'm going to be honest with you. I, I'm kind of retarded. <laughs> In that. No, no, no. There it is. Um, actually, I'm a newer diversion and a minor. <laughs> yeah. Good stuff overall. Freak, dude. Uh, anyway. Let's continue with this. Which is a violation of Israel. Jesus. Okay, I'm good on this. Okay, hold on. There are emails I got that I think I should read on stream before deleting, so. <sighs> okay. One email. That guy was 100% wrong on Canadian housing. I work in the industry. Yes, I love emails that agree with me. Uh, source, I work in real estate and property management in the GTA for seven years. I think that means greater Toronto area. I myself am a proper ma property manager who does leasing and evictions. My family has worked in real estate for 25 plus years and has had many, many personal real estate investment properties for 25 plus years. There was a time when buying a home and making money off the appreciation was Kino in the GTA. Everyone made insane returns, like pretty much 100% returns in a couple of years. Times have changed, though. This current bubble pop happened around 2022, and now homeowners are losing their asses and assets. One thing that may be important to note, I've seen this come up a lot, but the vast majority of mortgages in Canada, or at least in the GTA, are variable rate. And rates in Canada have shot up like crazy. A lot of people are really struggling now to pay off their mortgage, including people with rentals properties. The rent will no longer cover the mortgage in many cases. Property values have also dropped ridiculously, in some cases like 400, 500K. It's absolute insanity. I would tell you more about the insanity of how much this has hurt people, but to be honest, this isn't the kind of thing my company would want me talking about. People who have spent their lives saving up for the opportunity to finally buy a home now suddenly find themselves in the hole 300 to 400K because their property value went down so substantially. Investors aren't buying anymore. Uh, renters, on the other hand, have extreme rights, as they should in a lot of cases. I personally always rent for myself for a variety of reasons. Rental prices right now are probably the lowest they've been in a very long time, aside from peak COVID. This is the time to secure a good lease in the GTA. The idea that tenants are scared of being kicked out of their homes is absolutely incorrect. It's very difficult to get somebody out of their rented home in Ontario, and it's very rare. Even if they aren't paying their rent at all, it takes a very, very long time to kick them out. For example... Uh, this is just one very recent story I just Googled, but things like this are very common in my company too. The industry we really don't want to talk about. In the industry, we really don't want to talk about it though because we don't want other renters to know this and take advantage of it, usually for renovations or for other reasons. If the landlord wants someone to leave the home, they offer a very generous buyout, like four to 12 months of rent because they know that it's much easier than that or than trying to go through the legal process. But again, this is very rare. Nobody has a struggle. This guy's talking about, he just made this up. Anyways, I'm sure you know all this. If you want, blah, 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 blah. Okay, wow, cool. Pace, true. And everything that guy said is 100% factually true. Absolutely. 